tried so hard to find the form that best suited you. What do all these productions have in common? USD, or Universal Scene Description. This computer is running Unreal Engine 5, and we've got Maya, Blender, Houdini, Substance Painter, the whole 3D family, and all of these applications are running simultaneously. You can do this at home on your computer, or if you have a bunch of different people in different locations on different machines, this works either way. Now before, to have all these applications work together, we'd need to export data back and forth, the old file formats, pipelines, incompatible data types. This has never been a fun process. But now, with USD as our common link between all these applications, and NVIDIA Omniverse as the central hub, Connecting them all, which is free by the way, watch this. Move the camera, change the model, update the texture, do this in Houdini. Use an asset library, use a different asset library. Move stuff around, change the lighting, do whatever you want to do, because all these applications talk to each other and sync their data almost instantly. And you can choose whether to look at everything everywhere all at once, or just work on your one asset and let other people look at everything else. This is why USD is such a big deal, and it's just getting started. So today we're going to talk three big questions. What is USD? How is it used to production? And how can we take advantage of its capabilities today? So question one, what is USD? Well, OpenUSD is a scene composition engine developed by Pixar Animation Studios. Pixar built this technology to help with their movies. They realized that to have these giant worlds and all these scenes with complex characters and geometry and everything that goes into these movies, they needed a better way to work with data. Traditional pipelines for visual effects and animation has always kind of had data going from one department to the next as everyone takes their turn on this assembly line working on the stuff, which means that later departments have to wait for that stuff to get to them and things like that. Now we're seeing that update in a lot of different ways in the industry with Unreal Engine and all kinds of real-time technologies as the model of the pipeline is changing and artists are able to work more collaboratively in real time and so on. Specifically with OpenUSD, the goal here, as I understand it, is to have a software agnostic file format and more to be able to allow artists to work with any data in any application at any time. But USD is not just a file format. That's what I thought it was for a while, but it's not. It's actually a description of scene composition data or a way to describe the world as a composition. If you're familiar with After Effects, think about the fact that you can have multiple layers and you can put them all in a composition. You can pre-comp those things. And then you can have other layers and another pre-comp and you can pre-comp those together. And you can just have these different collections, like in Blender, for example, you can have all these collections with stuff and other collections inside of them. USD works very much the same way. It can represent geometry, shaders, materials, lights, cameras, animation data. It can hold all that stuff. And the thing about it is it's universal. It works with any tool. And because it's being widely adopted by the entire industry, pretty much any application can work with it, can import it and deal with it without any major issues. And the only issues that currently exist are just because it's newer and people are still adopting it, but that's happening fast. It's an open source free technology with C++ and Python API integration. So you can develop tools for it. You can do whatever you want with it because it's available. And its focus is speed, performance, non-destructive workflows, and real-time collaboration. To boil all of that down into something very tangible and easy to understand, you can think of each type of work you might want to do, modeling, texturing, animation, lighting, camera stuff. All these different departments or types of work can just be a layer of USD data that an artist or a group of artists can be working on and messing with, and all of it can be referenced, iterated upon, and used as layers in larger compositions of USD data, so you can have as granular of control as you want. If you're a solo artist working on a project, you can literally just use USD as a file format. You export a model as USD, and there it is, it's a file format. Or if you're working with a team and you want to have that control to split things out where you could have your camera work, your environments, your models, your textures, you can have all these things broken out so that if you wanna mess with them, they are separate from each other and they can be iterated and messed with independently. And since each artist can be responsible for a layer, you won't be stepping on each other's work and you can deal with additives and overrides and how you want that data to all work together. But it's all actually very simple when you're actually using it, not just hearing the theory in a YouTube video. But enough theory, let's talk practice. Let's talk production. Who's actually using this and how are they using it? Well, I just came from SIGGRAPH and I can tell you that literally everybody was talking about USD. That's like the main topic of the entire week was USD and how it's being used and all these examples. It's it's like the thing right now. And rightfully so, it's a big deal. I can give you some examples from my time at SIGGRAPH. HBO's The Last of Us, for example, used USD all over the place, the various studios that were involved. There was a Houdini talk where they discussed all the destruction and world building, all that kind of stuff, leveraging these massive assets and building these giant worlds using USD. There were talks on pipeline, virtual production, animation. There were all kinds of presentations. Not all of them centered on USD specifically, but all of them can leverage it if they hadn't already been doing it. To give a very practical example of how I use USD, 
I often have to export my animation as Alembic data because if it's not compatible with FBX and I have to send it off to Houdini or to Unreal or to Blender or to wherever to you know get it out of Maya with all the deformations if it's not compatible with the game engine, Historically, I've used Alembic caches to bake out all that information, but I've been using USD instead lately because the file size is so much smaller and it plays so much quicker. I can't tell you exactly why that is. I haven't gotten quite that deep yet, but I know that when I bring in an Alembic cache with, you know, hundreds of frames of animation data, all baked to form to geometry, I can play that at, you know, 12, 13 frames a second, sometimes nine frames a second in some applications. But if I bring that same information in using USD, I save a lot of hard drive space and it plays at 24 FPS every time, which is my goal. I haven't actually tested it higher than that for game engine stuff. I'm typically doing 24 FPS work. But here's one more example from SIGGRAPH. There was a hands-on lab where you could go and learn how to do some stuff. It was like a live tutorial, live class, very cool. The lab was about creating character animation and leveraging some AI tools to help speed that up. We used Unreal Engine 5, Blender, and NVIDIA's audio to face application. We took the rigged character in Blender with some animation data. We brought that into Unreal Engine, walks around, does its thing. But for the facial animation, we brought the character into NVIDIA's audio to face, mapped that to this stylized character. AI helped us generate 52 blend shapes, the usual AR kit blend shapes, to this stylized mesh. From there, you feed the application an audio file. It generates facial animation and lip sync data. It's not quite the same as if we were doing it hand keyed, but it's quick, it's easy. It lets you bring it back into Blender. We brought it over to Unreal Engine and there he is, there's the character. In a 40 minute demo, we were able to bring all of this full circle with different applications into a complete piece of work. Now this isn't gonna make sense for every workflow, but the fact that this is a possibility now, so quickly and so easily with a platform like USD, this is a pretty big deal. And what's cool for those of us animators out there, you can still mess with the blend shapes. You can still add additional animation. Like we don't have to just say, cool, AI did our jobs for us. I know some people freak out about that. It's just a tool and we can go beyond that. And that's where the opportunity lies for those artists out there who are like, well, what about me? You can tell from this that it's not, you know, a high fidelity performance that you'd see in a movie. We need to take it further. But if for some reason you've got a project that's gonna have 30 seconds of facial animation, this can give you a nice head start. So finally, how can we take advantage of USD? Well, if you're using tools like KitBash, you might already be using it. They just came out with Cargo, which is that application that you can actually just pull individual assets from the Kitbash library into any scene. That runs off USD. That's a great example of just having all the data, software agnostic, you can drop it into any application. That's pretty cool. And that's an example of something being created off of the technology of OpenUSD. But for larger productions, or if you're doing a short film or a capstone thesis, like whatever scale you might be working at, the best way to do what I showed you at the beginning of this video to have all these applications talk to each other is through NVIDIA Omniverse, a free set of tools that does a lot. It's composed of five main categories. The first is the nucleus, which is sort of the data server that links all these things together. You have the ability to host a data server and, you know, connect stuff remotely. So if you're a big team or a studio, that's how they could have the computers all talk to each other. And that's gonna give you that bi-directional streaming via USD. But you can also just do it locally on your computer. You can just install it and use it. You don't have to do all the server stuff either. The nucleus is important because that's how the applications know like where the files live and how to talk to each other. And then there's all the connectors, the plugins that you install into each application for I think over 150 applications at this point. That's how I got Maya and Houdini and Unreal Engine and all those applications to interface. And then there's Kit, Simulation, and the RTX Renderer. Kit is the SDK, the framework where you can build tools on top of OpenUSD. The simulation side is more for physically based simulations, the massive amount of data processing for real time AI workflows and that kind of stuff. That's where you're going to get like the engineering and construction and manufacturing and like that side of industry. I don't think the animation industry is using that quite as much. And last is the RTX renderer, a way to visualize all this data in real time, ray trace, lit, all that kind of stuff. So if you have an RTX GPU, you can do all these things. You could have all these applications running and you can look at it all in a lit rendered environment using your graphics card. And if you don't have that hardware, you can still utilize everything else we've covered. You just won't look at it rendered in RTX with an Omniverse. But those applications all still talk to each other and you can still use all that functionality just fine. So the short answer is if you wanna start using USD, you can just start exporting to it from your software applications right now, or I'll leave some links below to download NVIDIA Omniverse if you wanna get into the bigger tools and more collaborative workflows between your applications. And if you want to see a tutorial for the whole real-time workflow, I actually did a video for NVIDIA Omniverse a couple years ago at this point, where I opened some stuff in the Unreal Marketplace, connected it to Maya and all these applications, and started messing with it. So if you wanna see that as sort of a hands-on thing, I'll put that down below as well. And that's USD in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the crash course. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this. As always, links to everything useful down below. I'm Sir Wade, and I'll see you in the next video.